Nick let me pick today's cigar. I grabbed one, I had no idea what it is. It is the Bone Shaker. Full Strong. body cast. Full body cast. That's what they call this one. Strongly handmade Nicaraguan. Uh, strongly, uh, that's what I have been told. I haven't smoked it yet, and I haven't had lunch yet, so this could be interesting. Welcome back. I am uh, Jonathan J. O. Owen. I'm Nick Douglas. And this is our smoking reviews here at the Party Source on the Party Source Reviews. We are at the lovely Braxton Labs behind the Party Source. It is some of the last days of summer going into fall and it is gorgeous out here. It sure is. So we're going to go in heavy and hard with the Bone Shaker Full Body Cast. If you look, it does have a full cast on there, which I think is awesome. And mm -hmm. Nick warned me, he's heard this is incredibly strong, and he's also like, I ain't smoked this one. Yeah, we haven't, I haven't had it. Uh, the, there's three different installments uh, in the Bone Shaker line. These are actually made by AJ Fernandez for um, Santa Clara Tobacco. Santa Clara Tobacco is basically a distribution arm of Altatus USA, which owns uh, great brands like... Uh, Monte Cristo, Romeo, things uh, H up and things along that line. So this is another uh, from Santa Clara Tobacco, another AJ Fernandez blend, and there's also the original Bone Shaker, and then there's one called the Boneyard, and this is the uh, the full body cast, which the name would lead me to believe that it's probably going to be the strongest out of the bunch, but I don't know. We'll find out here in a minute, maybe. If this seems like stuff you would be interested in, you need to please hit that like button and then subscribe to our channel and please make sure you ring that bell that way you'll be notified whenever we do something cool and unusual and fun like this not cruel and unusual but cool and unusual yeah that makes a difference the breeze is kicking up yeah, a little, I'm I'm a little, little up. bit of, hard to know. light the cigar I'm, I'm hoping that's not interfering with the sound too much well, you got that fun little fuzzy cover on your microphone there. That's called a dead cap. Yeah, whatever. That's a scientific term for it. What is it? The actual term for it is called a dead cap. Is that just supposed to uh, cut down on the wind noise? Yes, oh. it, uh, background cut down. And there's another one which looks like it's a mesh that goes around it, and it's called a blimp. Fancy. Yeah. Those do tend to get bent after a while, though. Nobody wants a bent blimp. Man. I'm having a little bit of trouble on my draw here. It, it's still coming, but I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble on my draw. I'm gonna try clipping it again. I, that would have been my suggestion, is cut it down just a little bit further and see yeah. if that draw opens up. So that's kind of one of the things to do, guys. If you have trouble with your first draw, give it another clip. Sometimes if you just haven't clipped it right, or maybe there's something blocking it. There we go. That looks much That's better much right better, there. Yeah. yeah, you just uh, didn't take quite enough of that cap off. Uh, J.O. is using uh, from Vertigo. It's uh, that that cutter is actually called the Little Bro, but it's uh, it's a perfect cut. So you can only cut off just the cap. So every once in a while, it's got a, like especially if it's you know triple cap like these appear to be, uh, you know you might need to cut it twice just to make sure you get all the way through. So uh, if that doesn't work for you, you could have some. Uh, some other issues in uh, the cigar. Keep in mind that cigars, uh, premium cigars, are handmade. So uh, you know, every once in a while you get one that maybe doesn't draw quite right or burn quite right. But uh, yeah. good factories like AJ Fernandez uh, seem to eliminate most of that. Yeah, I'm gonna say straight up that man, this is definitely a full-bodied cigar. It is um, strong on the flavor. Got some it's sweetness to it. Yeah, it's got a ton of that nicotine bitterness on the kind of the back palate. I don't know if that was just for me trying to puff on it to get it really drawing. I'm gonna wash my palate a bit and kind of go back for it. I, I can see where you get a little bit of bitterness on the tongue, but the the blend itself has enough sweetness to it that um, doesn't really seem to... Orange oil. oil. Orange oil. Orange oil, that's it. It's that orange oil is very sweet, but yet kind of a residual bitterness. That's fun. Definitely thinking on this one. I'm getting a little uh, 
a little leather, a little earth. Uh huh. It's it's such a rich palette, but yet the draw on it is so nice. Now that I've got a cut right. I was gonna say you were worried there at first. I really was, because uh, about about a week ago I fired up one of them and there was no resistance on my draw. Really? After about after about five six puffs, I was down to there. Oh, that's and I was not just good. Like, and it's just like it was burning, and it was just like there, there's there was no no resistance. So I've always been a little I've been a little shaky since then. It's actually got kind of a unique flavor that I can't quite it put my, does. my finger on. I've been trying on. to put my finger yeah. on that. It's rich. It's not like a sweet custard. You know, something you say rich, it's like, you know, it comes off as custardy. Um, bready. It seems to be developing a little bit more, too, so yeah. maybe I'll... Uh, very mineral heavy. It's very, very full body. Very complex. There is that one flavor I can't put my mind on, and it's. And my mind is kind of going toward uh, like truffles or mushrooms. And if you've ever had anything like a truffle spread, it is sweet and rich, and with the residual oil. It's actually it's very, very good. Not really a mushroom fan myself. No, okay. But more because they squeak when you eat them. Yeah, those raw ones do rubbing against your teeth do squeak. Yeah. Not a fan. Almost getting a little baker spice kind of thing going, like a little graham cracker or something along those lines. Okay, a boom of vanilla just hit my palate. Well, this is me just going off the nose, and we hadn't fired it up yet since I picked it, and neither one of us had tasted it. So, may I have your glass? Yes, sir. Um, just by going off the nose, I picked an Armagnac from Delord. Ooh. This is a Napoleon. This is a Boss Armagnac coming in at 80 proof. It's good stuff, too. I've yes, had it, it is. And so, I was thinking a rich butteriness with this, uh, and the sweetness of the, um, of the Armagnac, the grapes. Coming in, I think, would actually add to the flavor. Not to mention this is a little bit more char heavy. Okay. Boy, it's, it really seems to just, the flavors keep shifting all over the place here. Yeah, they really have. Yeah, this this bone bone shaker is shaking up our palate. Oh wow, that is so strange. That gave like vanilla, fortune cookie, um, great jam, sweetness, orange marmalade, and that's just from one sip. <laughs> All right, shut. <laughs> Do a shot now, right? You just told me to shut up. Again. Yeah, do a shot. I just, I, yeah, I said shut up, Nick. So do a shot. Oh, wow, yeah, really. That is an awesome pairing. Citrusy kind of thing comes yeah. out on that. That's, that's interesting. I'm going to lay off of this for a little bit because I want to focus more on this cigar. See if I can identify some of these flavors. That is nice. Mm -hmm. That works really well. What's uh what's a bottle of this uh Boss Armagnac go for? Forty. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. That's not bad at all. This cigar is uh coming in what around six, six? bucks a yeah, piece. Yeah, I think this uh, one well. it's under six for it. I mean it's a rich, full body. This could be a uh, man. This is not a walk around the uh around the suburbs kind of cigar. This would be like dessert. This cigar with this cognac after a nice steak dinner or a big juicy burger or something like that. I'm going to, um, and folks, we got a celebrity walking by. Oh, he's running. <laughs> now he's, he's running. running. <laughs> <laughs> that was Marty Holland from our other channel. He's like, I ain't getting in front of the camera. He's running away. <laughs> mm. 
I don't think I'm gonna want to go back into work no. after we get done I mean, here. I'm just, I'm trying to identify because I'm getting chocolate wafers now. You remember like those vanilla wa not vanilla wafers, but the uh, the sugar wafers? Oh yeah. It, uh, it's like that, only the chocolate ones. It has got a level of like a fluffy cream to it, but the crispiness and the, uh, the sweet texture that you get after you've swallowed it of uh, the, um, the actual wafer itself. It is so unique. Layers of chocolate with vanilla and the body on this. It is bringing out a little bit of a white pepper on the retro ale. It's, uh, I'm not brave enough to do that on this one. I think I would die on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you might want to leave the, you Just take my word for it. Okay, I will. Picks up a little more of that breadiness too now on the retro ale. Toasty. Toasty. Bready. You know, my mind is always going for like cigars like this. It's going toward things like um, uh, either really sweet or it goes for things that are very um, heavy and meaty. But this is like treading the ground. It is such a thick cigar. Such a full bodied cigar, but the mind is just going to things like. Um, Sponge puddings, which are not sweet at all. Um, the the chocolate wafers, which are not sweet at all. And I'm getting like an orange drizzle. It's like, have you ever had? Uh, don't laugh at the name, folks. This is what they call it in Great Britain, an orange spotted dick pudding. I have not. Okay, it's called spotted dick because it has raisins in there. Okay. It is not sweet at all. It explains the spotted part. Yes. I don't know why they call it dick, but you know. Yeah, um, I, I, and it, we'll it's even to, worse. It's advertised as a schoolboy favorite. We'll have to Google, Google that and find out what the <laughs> yeah, answer is. Yeah, so if you know why it's called that, please leave that down in the comments. We would love to know. But it reminds me of the spotted dick with an orange drizzle on it. I lived in Great Britain for uh, a while, and so I did get to try a lot of it. And honestly, some of their steamed puddings, which again are not sweet, they're very thick. They're soft, they put in like fresh fruits in there. But yet the cardamom and the nutmeg are incredibly pronounced in them. It's more of a spicy dessert than a, our idea here in America, which is pure sweet. And I've been ignoring this drink because I'm so fascinated with this cigar. I'm, uh, I have not been ignoring the drink. Mmm. Guys. Pick you up some of this Boss Armagnac de Lord mm. Napoleon and pick you up one of these Bone Shaker full body casts. This is probably the best pairing we've ever made. I think you might be right. That's uh... a, just a layer of caramel is coming out of there. If this is your full bodied bready, this is the topping for it. Mm. It is so good. You imagine um, maybe suspending one of these cigars in the bottle when it's empty for like a little while, seeing if that would work. Try to infuse it? Yeah, try to infuse it. Suspend that cigar in there. Well, after it's uh, after this is set. We can always try. We can always try. So again, leave that in the comments if you want to see it. Well, I don't think it would fit in the box. You might be able to get it in there. I don't think it's going to fit. Shut up, Nick. <laughs> they don't make it any smaller, do they? Maybe we could do like a bigger bottle. Just put like a residual, shake it around, and dump that out, and then suspend it in there? Probably do that. Okay, we could try that. Yeah. Like a Russell's Reserve bottle or something would have a little bit or wider like, opening. Or uh, a, a decanter or something with a bigger bigger, no, bigger mouth. Or I guess we could just get a mason jar and do the same thing. We certainly could. The mason jar would do the job. Got a better seal, I bet, on the mason jar. Mm. Mm. Man, I don't want to... You know, I have barely made any headway on this. And I am loving it. a lot of tobacco. Of yeah. This is definitely a good two, two and a half hour smoke for me. Mm -hmm. You're doing much better headway there. But this, I mean, uh, it is very finely made for a five cigar, uh, for a five buck cigar. Six dollars. Well, it's a little breezy out here. There you go. <laughs> That's well made right there. Hey. Dude, oh. <laughs> it's like the wind started blowing. You see her playing up making there. making a blowing. mess over here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap it. Okay, got a little bit of a cone. I've been smoking a little bit slower. Dude, I, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rate this. I'm gonna, give this. I'm gonna give this one a good solid rating because I think it's wonderful. 
First off on this pairing, I don't think we'll ever do a better pairing than this. That is a solid 99 pairing. Well, it me. gives you something to aim for, yeah. but I'm right there in the high 90s with you on Yeah, that. but for just the smoke, for the price, the construction, the level of complexity that I just want to sit down and explore over and over again, that is going to come in, and I'm going to give this a solid 92. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, it's, it's it, not... Not the best cigar I've ever smoked, but it's so unique that that certainly plays for it. Unique, uh, great, rich Nicaraguan tobacco. It's uh, you know another great cigar from AJ Fernandez. I don't know how he keeps doing it, but he does. It's uh, but yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm probably at about a 93 myself because okay. uh, I'm really taking into consideration that much complexity at that, that price, price point. I mean, you just don't get that very often. I'm definitely going to pick me up one or two of these. Absolutely, this is, this is absolutely gorgeous. And I, if I'm out at a bar. I'm definitely going to be picking up, not necessarily, I'm going to see what Armagnac, I think Hennessy would probably work with this. Hennessy is a lot more sweet and velvety than this one. That's a cognac it, though, right? Yeah, it is Does a it cognac. make any difference? What's the difference between a cognac and an Armagnac? Leave that down in the comments. <laughs> Actually, the truth is, they're all, uh, it's like whiskey. It's under the brandy umbrella. Okay. It's a different region. Cognac ah. is from the cognac region. Brandy is the entire compassing. And then uh, there is... The Boss Armagnac region, the equivalent of a Boss Armagnac, and there's a sweat bead down there. That no, no, not, he keeps not, trying to get me too. They constantly bother my leg down. He's keep notice my hand going down there, brushing away. Um, but the <laughs> Boss Armagnac is the equivalent of the Moonshine. It, it can be. It is hmm. less regulated, more um, less filtration, less refinement, and it's okay. like the equivalent of you know, Granny can make it in her bathtub. Mm. And it's actually rather quite good, and so you'll notice the first thing is just the butteriness of it, where cognac is fine and delicate. Hennessy is kind of sweet tea-like to me, so okay. I think I think this would go very well with a sweet tea, or just you know a Hennessy, a Cavossier. But honestly, I would go for anything that is labeled Napoleon and Boss Armagnac. I think that would work best. Yeah, absolutely. God, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, I you know Nick and I. Are gonna reluctantly head back in yeah it sucks. so guys <laughs> you're awesome you really really are thank you so much for what you have done for us on this new channel and tell all your friends all about it and nick what do they need to do stay smoky stay smoky <laughs>